Hello everyone, this is Diane with Pretty Pink Cottage. Welcome to my channel. Today we will be working on this little strawberry journal. It is made with a Reader's Digest <coughs> excuse me, book cover. One of the smaller ones with no design on it. It had the Pegasus embossed in it down there, but that's covered up. So it's about 5 inches by uh, a little over 7.5 and I usually give my books a two inch spine, but I'm already at the two inch spine mark and I haven't even um, done the third signature yet. So it's gonna be a chunky book. I'll probably still do two inch spine, but it may have an alligator mouth, which I don't usually like to do. But I know some of you don't mind, so I think we'll probably just go with it. So here's what I've got so far. Uh, the kit that I'm using is a small journal kit. I didn't realize how small the pages were because I didn't pay attention when I purchased the kit. I just loved the pages. This is one of the pages, but I'm looking for another because that one doesn't have strawberries. So it has strawberries and pink flowers and things like that. So there's some strawberries. But there's a lot of blue in this kit. So I was looking for something I could use on the front of this to kind of tie in with all the blue that will be inside. Uh, it's not as much blue as I thought I would do in there, but there is quite a bit. So I found this. This is a printable that I had used last year. I cannot remember the name of the Etsy shop, but I will link it below. I'll link this kit below. And um, it does have a pale blue background that perfectly matches the blue of this kit. So I just cut, I printed that one page and I cut it in half and put it on the front and the back and with Mod Podge. I stamped this and stamped the word inside. I'm not going to go into detail of what I have done already. I just uh, wanted to share that with you and to say that I have the first signature pretty much done. So I will be following this plan to make this signature. And I think I have everything prepped for this one. So we're just gonna go through that and do as much as we can on camera. And this one, I just started prepping things for it. Actually goes that way. Um, but we're gonna focus on this one and I will need this one for reference. The first thing we are going to do, though, is I'm going to show you how I can use my layered strawberry stamp. This has four layers, and you have to line them up. And I did some that were pretty good, but not as good as this one. So I'm going to show you how this was accomplished. That's what we're going to do before we start um, putting signatures, uh, decorating the signature pages. I just have a scrap of cardstock, which is big enough to do. I'm gonna do two at a time while we're, while we're doing it, might as well. Um, and the reason I was able to do that one lined up so nicely was because I got out my Stamp-A-Majig. Does anybody know what a Stamp-A-Majig is? Nowadays, they have the stamping platforms, which I do not have, they are kind of expensive and they're kind of big and I think there might be some smaller ones out there but I have not purchased a stamping platform and I think that there are probably more purposes for a stamping platform than lining up your stamp exactly where you want it but that's one of the purposes of it but that's what the purpose of a stamp -a jig is it's just this little tool it's got a non-skid bottom it's got right angles and a handle I actually have two of them. I think they were both given to me. I did. I have used them in the past, but very rarely because I was too lazy to bother with the steps. But I really need them for this. So this comes with it. I have the two stamp -a jigs but only one piece of the acrylic or the plastic. It's smooth on one side, and this side is slightly textured. And so this is the side you stamp on. Um, so let me just show you how it works, and maybe you already know. I'm going to stamp my <coughs> first layer on my paper, and I'm using uh, Primrose Petals from Stampin' Up. I'm not sick. I just get this tickle in my chest all the time. 
So when I start talking, I start coughing. So I'll just stamp that there. And stamp very clearly. Let's do that again over here. That's better. And I'll stamp another one. And now the next layer for this is the darker red, which will lay on top of the berries that I just stamped. So how am I going to line that up? I'm going to take my piece of plastic. I'm going to put it right into the corner, the right angle of my stamp -a jig Ink my stamp up. And then put the corner of my ink on my stamp block. If you were using a wooden block, you would put the corner of the block into that corner and stamp. I'm going to do that again because I think my uh, ink block wiggled a little bit when I placed it down. So let's just do that again. I want to make sure that as I demonstrate, it comes out right. Put it in the corner there. I think I'll take this off because that might make things a little slippery. <clears throat> okay. And there is my stamped image. Now, I'm going to take this and position it right over my first stamped image. And you can see that the plastic is a little bit askew. That doesn't matter. What matters is that I will line the stamp -a jig right up with the corner of this plastic. So this is the position it was in when I stamped it going to put a little more ink on my stamp. Keep the stamp -a jig right here and remove the plastic. And then when I line this corner up again, it should stamp right where I need it to. Voila. Let's do that again. And I can continue that with my other stamps. I'm going to move on to the green stamps. Just going to wipe this off because I was doing it without wiping the ink off and because I'm just using the same colors over and over. But it just made my fingers very inky and then I was transferring that ink where I didn't want it. So the next one is going to be my first layer of green. So I will use the lighter color of green, which is gumball green. These are all Stampin' Up! colors. Wipe this off. So you can do this with more than layering. If you want to, if you stamp a circle or you have a circle on something and you want to stamp in the middle of it, you can use the stamp -a jig to help you position. You know, if you just need to stamp one thing but you want it in a certain spot, this will help with that. So I'm just going to stamp in the corner here. It's a pale green so I can see it better when I put it on the white. Now there are little white dots on here and they are the centers of flowers little red dots I think I said white and I can see the flowers on this so I can really be meticulous about lining this up perfectly 
so that the dots are in the centers and this is upside down because the stem needs to be down here no that was the stem okay sorry so there's a stem right here. You can't see it very well, I'm sure, because it's stamped so light. But there's a stem that goes right along the side of that berry. So I've got that lined up. That looks pretty good. See, I just uh, tweaked it a tiny bit to adjust something over here. And now it's looking great. So it's very cockeyed right now. I'm gonna move this so I'll be in a better position to stamp without getting in the way of the camera. Okay, it still looks good. I'm going to remove that and I'm going to stamp. looks so good. Beautiful. Where's that stem? That's why I thought it was upside down because it's so pale. And then the when the stamp the stem went over on top of the uh, strawberry, I couldn't see it. Okay. That looks perfect. Move this again so it won't be so awkward to stamp it. Well, that one's not quite as perfect, but it's it's good enough I think there's a little bit of white there but we're gonna stamp another layer I don't think that will fill in that white one more layer and then we'll be done so if I did this if I wanted to do a dozen of these I could stamp you know a dozen all in a row and I would probably do more than a dozen in case some didn't turn out but that would make it go faster because I would have you know, the same, the one ink open for the 12 and the one piece of plastic stamped for all 12. Now I have to clean this one off and we'll stamp again. So the stamp on jig doesn't usually, the process isn't usually this long for it, but because there are four layers, it's going to be. A little bit more involved. So this just has detail for the leaves, the veining and things like that. If the camera wasn't on, I could put this wherever and then I could just stand up and adjust my body position, but oh, I went way off with that. There's something about this that isn't right. Okay, 
I'm going to line this up again. Because I couldn't make the stamp line up. Ah, like that. I'm going to do this one because this one is lined up better than that one. Let's do this one. Sorry, guys. I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to start again with this because I did it yesterday. Well, you saw the one I stamped and it turned out great. I didn't really need to clean that that off. I needed to clean that off. All right. I'm going to kind of kind of line it up on this as best I can to make it a little bit more uh, in the area that I need it to be. Nope. Because it has to be in here. making this more complicated than it should be. Okay. Just do it. Okay, there's my stamped piece. Now it's lining up great. I don't know what the problem was before. It's a little bit smeared, but it is at least showing me where the images will be. And I think as as I practice using the stamp on jig I think it'll get to be easier. But that that's pretty good. This one is good. This one is decent. It's usable. I'll show you and let you decide because I can take a marker and fill in that color if I want to. Not bad. All right, so that took a little more time than I anticipated, but we're going to move along now and work on our journal pages. One of these will be cut out and used on one of the pages, but probably won't have time to do that on camera. Clean the ink off my fingers and we will move on. the one we're going to be decorating. I've already done the stenciling and adding the lace and I did some of the decorating already. I think I did most if not all of the sewing. So this instead of um, instead of stenciling it I'm going to just glue some decorations on it. outside with something. I don't know what. The time of year when you're going to hear lawn mowers and weed whackers every time I make a video. Oh, that might be a neighbor and acquaintance. He's actually my if you can, if you can follow the train here, my uh, daughter-in-law's stepfather. <laughs> he um, does lawns, and I can do my own lawn. I have a battery-operated lawnmower, and my lawn is not big, 
but I've been paying my grandson to do it, but every time he mows the little side yard, it, it stalls. It stalls and it stalls, and then the ba it kills the battery trying to restart it all the time. So I did the mowing yesterday because he wasn't available, and as soon as I hit that side yard, it stalled. It was so hard to push it in that yard, and it stalled, and, and the yard was very, very bumpy. Um, so I called this man and because he had mowed my, he had mowed for me before and he does my weed whacking if I need him to um, and I talked to him and he said he noticed um, how difficult it was to mow that section he said it's got a different kind of grass it's a clump grass and it's very difficult and it's very um, rutted in that yard because when they do the snow plowing, they plow the corner of my yard, my side yard, and dump the snow there because it's a corner lot, and it just creates more ruts and pits. So he said, my electric battery-operated lawnmower doesn't have the power needed. Well, what am I going to do with that side piece of yard there? So he offered to come and mow it for me, and he's not even going to charge me. But I think I'm going to ask him if I can set up just, you know, how much would you charge me for doing that side yard and doing my weeds every week. And I'll just pay him every week, and then I'll do the rest. <laughs> or Teddy will do the rest. So though, that was a strip of, um, so that's what he, that's who it is out there. So he's right outside my window. Um, this is a strip of digital paper that I had cut. It's part of the kit, and this was part of um, ephemera, strawberry ephemera kit that I purchased from um, Porch Swing Designs. Is that right? My front porch. My front porch. And this digital kit that I'm using is called Strawberry Garden, and it's from Chapter 1 Papers. I'm not going to talk about the kits anymore, but this is just a strip of scrapbook paper. Oh. <laughs> this, one. this one goes here. Now I have a piece of um, yellow, tight, or yellow, pink typing paper, vintage typing paper, and I'm going to put these little labels that are part of the little kit. And I'm using two because you can see through them, through, see through the paper, and it would just look like a white rectangle on the other side. digital that has the little pages also had two full eight and a half by eleven sheets so I had to trim that's where I got that piece of trim so this is a beautiful floral but it has strawberries and I am going to take this little scrap that I had and just make a tuck spot up that glue that's drizzling or I am going to get into it and make a mess and ruin things. Ugh, now it's on my You have to stand it up or lay it on its side or you just have to shake it all the time when you want to use it. But sometimes when you lay it on its side, it just keeps oozing, it makes a mess. And I just have this little card I'm going to tuck in there. And this tag. This is just a, a sold tag, usually used on furniture. It's got a little slot to, that they stick something in and they tie it to the piece of furniture. And I don't even remember where I got it, but I'm going to just add this little strawberry that Mardell made. I do apologize for the noise, but that yard really needs to be mowed. 
since Teddy was unable to do it and then I was unable to do it, it's looking like a jungle. I tried so hard to make a video, to make this video yesterday, but this week is a crazy week. I've got grandkids every single day this week. I had Layla Monday and Tuesday, and um, today and tomorrow I'll have Adam and Teddy, and Friday I'll just have Teddy. I'll have to go get the boys in a little bit. So it just seemed like whenever I was ready to make a video, something else was happening too soon, and I wouldn't be able to have time to make the video. It's one of those weeks. But I've got some time this morning. I don't have to go pick the boys up till 11. They are on, um, they're doing some schooling right now, but they're on a day that's not scheduled. Teachers are doing testing or something, so they just have assignments to do and they don't have to do them at any specific time. So we are more uh, flexible today. They're doing some work and then I'll pick them up before lunch and bring them here to finish. And then I just used my Baker's Twine. This is a nice thick base Baker's Twine that I got at um, Walmart. They sell them in packs of two. I don't remember if these two came together. But they sell them in packs of two on the clothespins. So that's, I think that's pretty cool. And they're nice thick ones. So that makes a fun little tag to add to this. And over here, I'm just going to make a pocket. So this came out of a, um, I think it was one of the golden dictionaries. I'm just gonna glue that on to this scrap of, scrap of paper. And you can see there's a black mark right there, which I didn't like. So I have this little pink tag, it's a dyed tag, and I stamped just a number on it. It'll decorate and cover the black mark. wooden black strawberry stamp and I have stamped it just using red ink but this time I want to use both red and green so I'm going to color with my watercolor marker these are Stampin' Up markers but any watercolor marker would do just don't want to color on the parts that are the green leaves So I'm sorry, I'm holding it closer to my face so that I can see. Now I can just color the rest of the berry. Then I'll take my green marker and do the rest. These are pretty juicy markers, so it'll stay wet, but I'll also puff on it with my breath to moisten it again before I stamp. I was afraid I would. That turned out nice. 
just did that. going to be a belly band and it is with another strip of the larger piece of paper from the kit and I just took a piece of green cardstock uh, wider than this strip and edge punched it so I'll glue that in the center and it will be the belly band for that. Then I can just glue the ends of the cardstock and adhere it to the page. For this one I used a strip of wallpaper which I glued to um, cardstock, not wallpaper, wrapping paper. Oh, now he's using his weed whacker, which is good. I guess that's him. Doesn't sound super close. Uh, there's a index card, and I'll stick something else in there sometime. And I added a little fabric cluster there. And on this page, just to give you a place to journal, I'm going to just glue this printable that I cut apart. And I have a label and a word that I stamped. This word is cut from this big background block of uh, words. I love to stamp this and then cut the pieces out. I chose the word share because it's good to share strawberries. But one of the words on that block of stamps is sweet. So of course I already use that word. I had that right in the middle. Oh well. I've got glue on there now so I can't move it. So that looks pretty, doesn't it? That page is done. I 
There were so many white pages in this book, and I did not want to stencil all of them, so that's why we're decorating them in other ways. This is a scrap of wrapping paper, and this is just a little scrap of <coughs> scrapbook paper that I really like. I like both sides. So I'm using every tiny bit of it. I think this is the last of it. I'm wondering if I can use that stamp a jig for my uh, Strawberry Builder Punch, too. I'll have to try that. Seems like it would work. And I already had that one done, so there's space for writing there and there. And I already decorated this page. I just have a blue airmail paper. It's a lined one. It's not old. It's not vintage. I got it from Amazon a couple years ago. And then I have the center signature for a page. So I took some of the little pockets. This kit comes with a lot of these little pockets. And I don't know why I did it already on this one instead of waiting to do it with you. But um, I tried gluing it down just like you're supposed to on these folds and then putting the tag in, but the tags flop around. So on this one, they were already glued down, so I just added a little drop of glue on the edges here, right at the top, so that there isn't that much room for the tags to slide around. On, on these, I glued these flaps down, just those two flaps, not the bottom one. And then I added the glue here to glue it down so that there's only this much room for the tags. And then I left this open so the tag can slide down in there. Does that make sense? So that's what I did. So they don't, they slide down without flopping around. That one's not going all the way down now. This is from the old strawberry plant catalog. And I cut it out and glued it to cardstock and cut it out again. And it is going to be a cute little tuck spot. And I'll put one of the printable tags or cards in there. And I decorated that part and then I just have an envelope from the kit. So I'll just do some inking in there. And what else? I think I've got more to do. This is where I thought I would add one of these. So I'll probably cut this out. I don't think I have one already cut. I'll cut one of these out and just add it here somewhere. Otherwise, I think this signature is done. I'll just have to add things to the pockets. Oh, not done. One more. This is a piece of textured paper. It has a very cottony quality to it. I think it came on a, on a roll. 
um, it looks like it's quilted and when I cut it with the paper trimmer it just looks like um, it has little cottony fibers can you see right there little cottony fibers I don't know if you can see but anyway I kind of just snip those little fibers off but it's really cool paper so I just cut it to fit and I cut it tall enough that I could fold the top down just to make it a little sturdier at the top and I added some trim to the top and I sewed all the way around just so it would look like it was sewn to the page and this is one of the tags that we made on a video and I'm just going to add this word and this pretty little heart to the pocket. Let me see what the other one looked like. This is what the other one turned out like. Oh, this is my other bottle. I have two bottles going at the same time, just for, so when one starts to run low, the other one is full and ready. So maybe this one will work better for me today. some labels. Lots of labels come with this kit also. You get lots of labels and lots of those little pockets and quite a few tags too. I'll just put this one up here. I have these in blue and yellow and dark pink. There must be another color because they came in sets of two. Maybe there's a light pink too. And they're not that expensive. And they're at Walmart in the paper crafting section. So there's that. And that takes us to the end of the video. So these are coming together very nicely. Um, I think I'm going to use this fabric for the spine. I love this fabric and I don't have a lot of it left, but I think this blue is beautiful with this blue. And so I think I'd like to use that for the spine. But I have to decorate this signature. Maybe I can get this signature done before I have to go get the boys. So um, the next time you see this video, this journal, that will probably be for a flip through. I thank you for coming along with me on the journey. If you've watched several of these videos, um, got this one all ready to go. And I'm not sure what the next project will be. I Remember I did those uh, smash books with the golden encyclopedias and then I was going to use three other covers from the same set for glue books and I haven't done that yet. So uh, I'll either do that or I'm not sure. But it might be those. They're a fast project. <coughs> Thanks for crafting with me today. I hope that you have a creative day today, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.